There's a series of aphorisms formulated by British science fiction writer Arthur C. Clarke that are known as Clarke's Three Laws. And although the first two are interesting in their own right, the third and final one is by far the most well known. It states that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And I think it's become such a popular quote because it captures a truth about how we experience technology. We act as if we know how most of the technology around us works, but we really don't. And therein lies an opportunity. GPS is not only essential for all the things we would expect, like mapping, navigation, and aviation, but also for things like wildlife tracking and precision farming, even finance. Yet most of us have no idea how it works, and that's a shame because it's a fascinating system, or rather, a fascinating type of system. Because GPS refers to a specific one, the Global Positioning System, which is operated by the US Air Force, famous because it was the first and because it has the most satellites in orbit, but nowadays there's also GLONASS, which is operated by Russia, and both will soon be joined by Galileo, operated by the EU, and Beidou, operated by China, though all of them are composed of constellations of time-traveling satellites. And yes, there's time travel. But let's start with the easy bit. So you're somewhere on the Earth, and above there's all these satellites constantly orbiting the planet so that at any given time there's enough of them above to figure out where you are, which we can do through a deceptively simple process called trilateration. Each satellite keeps track of their own position and of what time it is, and transmits that signal out which doesn't seem all that useful, but since we know how fast that signal travels, just with the time the signal was sent and the time it was received, we can know how far away you are from each satellite. So then by eliminating all positions either too close or too far, we get a sphere of your possible locations. None of this tells us in what direction you are, but by seeing where the spheres we calculated for each satellite intersect, we can figure out exactly where you are. Now, to be able to measure how much time the signals between the satellites and you take, we need to be able to trust the clocks on those satellites. And that's why these satellites have extremely accurate atomic clocks that work thanks to quantum physics. With them, we can be accurate within a billionth of a second, but even that, by itself isn't enough, because this is where time travel comes in. You see, thanks to special relativity, we know that time slows down for objects traveling at extremely high speeds. Cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev is living proof of this as the current time travel record holder, a feat he achieved due to the amount of time he spent traveling at high speeds inside the International Space Station, orbiting the Earth so fast that time became slightly slower for him, so that over the course of his career, he was able to travel a total of 20 milliseconds into the future. Of course, when it comes to the satellites and the GPS, they're always orbiting at high speeds. And so, just like with Sergei, the satellites are slowly drifting into the future. But that's only part of the picture, because along with special relativity, there's also general relativity, which tells us that gravity can slow down time as well. The Earth is itself a great example of this. The closer we are to it, the slower time is. That's why the Earth's core is younger than its crust, and why your feet are actually slightly younger than your face. It's a very small effect, but we now have instruments so precise that we actually can measure even the tiny differences between how your feet and your face experience time. All to say there's two opposing distortions acting on the GPS, one slowing time down and the other speeding it up. Which one wins out depending on the speed and altitude of each satellite's particular orbit? And that means all of them experience time differently both from each other and from you. However, thanks to our understanding of relativity, we know how to calculate the necessary corrections to keep everything in sync. 
making the GPS a giant, hyper-precise clock, and explaining how it's so integral for so many things that require extremely precise timing, like financial transactions in the stock market, maintaining power grids, or even doing experiments at CERN. Before, you needed your own atomic clock to get such precise time, but now all you need is a GPS receiver because we've graduated from guiding ourselves by the moons and stars to building our own constellation of little synthetic moons, each a clock keeping to the beat of an atomic heart as they drift through space and time, whispering directions to us. It's crazy enough that if you weren't already accustomed to it, and if we hadn't just spent all this time discussing it, you'd be almost forgiven for mistaking the deceptive simplicity of the GPS as magic. Almost. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and you can let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, maybe consider becoming a patron. They make these videos possible. And don't forget, you can find links to all of this as well as further reading on satellite guidance systems in the description below.